Wow, what a beautiful brown. Welcome everyone, my name is Phil Rowley and I'd like to welcome you to my fly tying bench where I'm going to show you how I tie some of my favorite still water fly patterns to help you catch beautiful fish just like this one. The strip tease damsel is simple, slender, and full of swagger. Just what you need in a damselfly nymph. Here are the materials to tie this great little fly. So let's tie the strip tease damsel. The first step is to form the eyes. There's lots of options for eye materials, melted mono, bead chain, but for this fly I like to use more of a traditional older technique, perhaps you don't see it very use very much today and that's knotted plus chenille or vinyl eyes. So I've got about a two to three inch strand of the plus chenille. Right up at the top quarter of the material I'm going to tie a simple overhand knot. It's a little tricky on the short length. Give that a tug, pull it tight and using my thumb and forefinger and while I'm pulling it tight and try to make that knot form in as round a profile as I can. So I've got one knot. Now I'm going to turn this upside down so you can see and I'm going to tie a second knot using the longer length of the material simply because it's easier. So I've got the knot formed, it's loose and I'm just going to move that knot while it's still loose right down next door so it sits right adjacent to the first knot and again I'm going to use my thumb and forefinger to help shape the knot so it's nice and round and I've got my two eyeballs formed ready for tying. This is the kind of thing you could do a whole bunch of these all at once if you're going to tie more than one strip tease damsel. So there you go. The eyes are ready to go. Let's start tying the rest of the fly. The hook I'm going to use for the strip tease damsel is a number 10 C49S curved scud pupa hook. It has the straight eye. This is important so when we pull the fly through the water it's going to wiggle back and forth when we use a non-slip loop knot. Helps suggest that plodding, sinusoidal, snake-like swimming motion of the natural damsel nymphs. So we're going to attach our tying thread. We're using some dot or 70 denier tying thread. We're going to get that started. Come in with our scissors. Trim off the excess. And move our tying thread right down just about halfway between the point and the barb. Don't want to go back too far. And then we're going to come right back up. And the first thing I like to do whenever I'm tying flies with eyes, such as damsels and dragon nymphs, is to put the eyes in. It gives me proportional goal posts. I know where the fly is going to end, and I know where it's going to start. This way I don't run everything forward and then realize I perhaps needed a hook, you know, an extra half inch or so out in front. So we're just going to take the eyes we prepared, we're going to treat these like common dumbbell eyes. We're just going to take our tying thread and we're going to figure eight wrap them in place right on top of the hook. And we're just back from the hook eye. Maybe one, no more than two hook eye width, the distance of the hook eye back from the hook eye itself. And now we're going to form the eyes. So I've got them figure eighted in. We're going to take the tag end after moving the tying thread, so the tying thread it's important, it's right behind the eyes. We're just going to take the tag end, take a loose wrap over and pull. It's quite loose, I'm not pulling on these tight, and I want to tuck that tag end right in behind the eye. Get that secure and repeat the process for the near side eye. So we're just going to pull that in place. And you see how that's loose and let the tying thread pull it in. A couple of extra tight wraps. We have two nice, rounded damselfly eyes ready to go. Now you might be looking at the color of these eyes and going, chartreuse, I haven't seen too many damselflies with chartreuse eyes. And you're probably right. The, the benefit of these eyes is when you see the overall fly, it's just the contrast they provide. I tied a dark olive version of this one day. and some reason, I had put these chartreuse eyes on, and the first cast, the fly just got pounded. The third cast, the fly just got pounded. I think it just stood out in the crowd and the fish said that thing just shouldn't survive and took special interest in it. So ever since that, I've put some contrasting eyes. I've got friends that tie their damselflies with bright red or even hot orange eyes. So that little bit of contrast is always good in the fly. Our next step is to tie in the wire ribbing. So I'm just using some chartreuse 
Go with our chartreuse theme here. Ultra wired in size small. You could use brassy, but small seems to work better. We've got that tied in. And then we're just going to secure the wire. Make sure it's all the way up and down. We've got a nice smooth foundation. And now we're just going to dub our body. Now the dubbing could be any material. This is kind of a light olive uh, Arizona um, scud blend. We're just going to pull off a small little pinch, moisten my fingers, and we're just going to spin the dubbing onto the tying thread. Essentially all we're trying to do is turn that tying thread a different color. That's how slender it is, particularly with damselfly nymphs. The widest part of any damsel, or dragon for that matter, is its head. So use that as your proportional goal post as well. You want to make sure that all of the proportions for your fly fall within the width of the head. You don't want to have a big, fat, squat body. Just not realistic. So we've got the body formed. And the body is a lighter color, because primarily when you see how we form the body, the, the wing case, if you will, or the shell back, and the tail, it's of a darker material. The next step is to tie in the shell back and the tail of the fly. And for this, we're using a fur strip. This is a micro zonker cut mink. You can also use squirrel. This, the mink tends to hold the lighter colors better, and the squirrel's better for the darker colors. So you just pick the one that matches the color of the damsel nymphs in whatever lake you're fishing. So what we're going to do, I'm moistening my fingers. I'm just going to make the fur stand up, because we're going to trim it off. So I make that stand up, come in with my scissors, give it one quick trim, get all those fibers out of the way. And we're going to secure that strip. Just going to pre-measure it. I'm going to trim that off just a little bit in front there. Because that's going to be our shell back. It's going to sit all the way down the top of the fly. So right behind the eyes, I'm just going to come up with my tying thread. Secure the first strip in. I'm going to take a half a turn with our ribbing material to position it. Fold our strip down. Go over the top, I'm applying loose pressure, and then I apply my tightening wrap, if you will, on the downside. This prohibits the material from rolling or twisting around. So whenever you're tying a shell back in like this, just over the top, and then apply pressure on the down stroke. And we just secure, open turns, right up behind the eye, tie off, a couple of wraps in front, pulling and twisting motion break away the excess wire ribbing. And then we're just going to trim this to length. You can do this now or at the end of the fly. It doesn't really matter. Use my scissor points as a guide. About the length of the shank. So I go back to here. Approximately where that is. Moisten my fingers again. It helps the hair stand up because I want to trim just the hide on a bit of an angle. It just swims better. And then we can stroke that down. And there you go. That'll, sl sorry, that'll slim right down as that fly gets wet and really wiggle and dance um, under the slow hand twist retrieves I like to use. It's typically a five turn hand twist with a really pronounced pause because they move along. They're, they're, like I said, a plodding swimmer. They're not Olympic athletes. They're not going to be in the next Olympics in any kind of sprinting event. More of a marathon swimmer. They just swim and plod and then rest with their legs in an outstretched position. So for our legs, we're going to use a model hen feather. You could use partridge, any soft hack you like, pheasant rump. What we're going to do is I'm just going to stroke the fibers down and isolate the tip section. And we're going to come in and trim that tip section right out. And then what we're going to do now is just sweep forward. And damselflies have six legs, so we want to make sure maybe about four per side, four or five, no more than that. We want to keep things nice and sparse. And we're going to use the stem to help hold our fibers in place and tie them in. So these are prepared and we're using the stem to our advantage. So I'm just going to hold these on top, one loose wrap right behind the eye, two loose wraps. I'll rotate the fly a bit, and you can see they're a bit long, so all I need to do is use the stem to my advantage, and I can pull them in. The legs aren't long, so we just happy like that. One extra wrap for luck, trim away the excess, and now all we need to do is sort of Pull the legs down each side and just secure them in place. We want them out the side to 
suggests the way the resting nymphs hold their legs outstretched when they rest. They swim and they rest. So there we go, we got our little legs going. And now all we have to do is return the fly to the horizontal position. And this is probably more for the fly tire than the fish. Is again just take our dubbing material. You could use the same material you used for the um, underbody that we dubbed earlier before the first strip, or the remnants you cut off the first strip. And we just wind that dubbing a couple wraps behind and in between to help further d divide and define the eyes. Come up. Three or four turn whip finish. Five turn, doesn't matter. Disengage. And there you go. The only thing left to do is perhaps apply a little head cement. And there you have it. A strip tease damsel. Great little damsel pattern. Really moves, undulates well in the water. As you can see, very simple to tie. Good contrast with the eyes. Really works well when damsel flies are on the move. For more information on fly fishing, and in particular still water fly fishing, don't forget to visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Of course, you can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next tying video.